Hello and welcome back to Misrepresented. I'm your host, Lisa Opie, and today we have Miss Lou Shefflin. Hi! Girl, you have a lot going on. I cannot wait to get into it. Oh my gosh, you too. Oh, it's thanks. been nine years. We need to catch up. It has not. It has. Oh, Since stop. our Biscaya shoot <gasps> forever ago. What? Yeah. Why do we look the same? <laughs> I don't know. Wait, actually, don't go back and look. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So before we get into everything, of course, we have to thank Pink Apple Dresses for dressing us today with Barbies. I love the pink. Party pink. Yes. So cute. So go thank ahead and check you. out the link if you want to check out Pink Apple Dresses. Um, so let's start with like, I guess, like a family yes. vibe. So you have a really close-knit family. I know I've met your mom. She goes to all of your pageants. She She's does. so awesome. We love Miss Stacy. Um, how important is family to you? Oh my gosh. The most important. My sister right now is actually in Abu Dhabi with her husband. What? That is They're so working fabulous. abroad. Oh. I know. So I've missed her for the past six months. Oh and my then gosh. my sweet family, my parents. And wow. um, she lives husband. in Abu Dhabi. They're there. They have oh. one more month left and then wow. they'll be headed home. Do officially. they love it? Love it. Awesome. Say it's beautiful. Oh. Have you visited? I haven't. <gasps> no, I haven't been able to, That's but we'll have to go back when they're not working so we can all <laughs> enjoy it as a family together yeah but totally. my sweet parents are in Dallas and just thriving doing what they love and so oh my God. we love each other from afar everyone's kind of on their own schedules really what about like the matching pjs and oh all the fun always stuff that you do <laughs> <laughs> always we have to match I, I think my, when my sister and I were little my mom and I had us in matching outfits every day and her number one rule was no bow, no go. So oh my gosh. Had to be wearing bows and had to be matching. So <laughs> she was raised right. <laughs> we brought it up through adulthood. I love that. So your mom is pretty iconic. I feel like she is a legend herself, mm -hmm. being a super successful entrepreneur in the business industry, but also like an amazing model. And you're kind of following in the footsteps. Um, so is there anything that surprised you in the modeling world? Oh gosh. I think just how different it is now from when my mom was younger mm -hmm. and just thriving. She lived with Cindy Crawford and Tyra Banks, no and she way. was the <gasps> blonde, bob, tall, it girl for sure wow. of the trio. Um, and just hearing her stories growing up, they were full-blown celebrities, like security, protected, front of every flight line oh and club gosh. line. It's just so different now, but she tells me of the most amazing stories of being the Dior house model and just having fabric draped on her for hours when she was my age. Wow. Did she love it? Oh, she loved it. She said wow. she didn't care how many times they poked her or how much her feet hurt. It was the most amazing experience ever. And Vera made her wedding dress and it was just, oh my gosh. It, it seems like her young life was such a dream. Mm -hmm. And now I think the industry has changed so much in amazing ways, but it's just different now. What do you think is, like, um, pushing that change? I think social media. Yeah. It's such a, an amazing tool for influencers and, you know, other creators. But it just makes the content different. Back then it was they're embodying Grace Kelly mm -hmm. and Jackie O. And now it's more, um, I don't know, it's just different. Yeah. And I love it. I think it's wonderful. I love the direction that the industry is going to be mm -hmm. more inclusive and um really encouraging women of all walks of life but yeah. it's just different yeah I think I saw you on a billboard by the airport or like a tennis <laughs> campaign or something yes that that's you? so was like, funny that's, <laughs> that's hilarious I know that was my first billboard ever oh my um, gosh. and so I'll get texts even till this day I think really? it's still up oh saying I just saw your face on the way to the Miami airport what? love seeing you before I fly and <gasps> Tell me about that it's, campaign and it the was, shoe. It was so fun. The brand is called Lucky in Love. It's They're like a sweet little, not little, I guess, big tennis and pickleball and golf mm -hmm. um, apparel line. And the whole team is really nice. It's a wife and husband that do all of the production. And it was honestly a surprise. I had done the shoot um, months ago, mm -hmm. and then they decided to use that image for the billboard. And so I got an email from oh my, my agent gosh. saying, Hey, you might want to go drive by this address. Did and it you was, know, did you have like I a had no feeling? idea? I had no idea. I thought, Oh, maybe like there's a little 
billboard on the side that'll be there for 10 minutes and then it'll go away or yeah some kind of picture but it's I, like printed on it's plastered it on move. there yeah it's on that building <laughs> for that. all to see so that was so such awesome. a fun moment in my career for sure wow and tell me about your start were you doing pageants or modeling first modeling so okay. with the mother that I had yeah. she got us involved with Wilhelmina in New York when they still had a kids and teens <gasps> division oh, when we lived in the northeast life. I was like seven or eight when oh I started so I'm coming up on my 15th year which is just wild wow <laughs> what's like your favorite campaign that you've ever done my first one really I, it was for American Girl Doll it was my first oh, job That's ever amazing what a dream I know for a little girl too that was just the yeah. epitome um and I was on their Fifth Avenue windows, blown up life size for the launching of the customized dolls. So they made one that looked like me. We shot in Newport. It was like just unreal. Did you get to keep it? No. What? That's the only phone I have to pick with American (laughs) Girl Doll. I'm like, no one else looks like me. What do you mean? I can't keep my doll. But it's okay. That was an amazing experience. My little dad was so proud standing in front of my billboard holding me and that's a memory wow. I'll always have. I need to see that picture if there's one. I have one. I'll show you. After. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, okay. So interesting fact, I think I found out when I was making these talking points is that you're training to be a pilot or are you already a pilot? I'm training, still in training. Oh my gosh. So interesting fact, pilot school is super rigorous and less than 6% of pilots worldwide are women mm-hmm. and you're one of them. How does that feel? Oh, I got chills. Honestly, <laughs> I really didn't. My, um, my grandfather's one was a paratrooper in the army wow. and the other was a fighter pilot during World War II flying B-17s. Wow. Um, I was actually verbally committed to play volleyball at the Air Force Academy. Wow, and congratulations. Then, thank you. And then I got injured and unfortunately it just didn't work out. Mm-hmm. But the desire for aviation has always been there. I feel like my forefathers really have pushed me to get in the wow. sky. So it is crazy the stat it's that it's only six you know percent. five, six percent mm-hmm. of women in aviation. Yeah. So it's it's really cool. And when you're up there, it's it's truly like nothing you've ever felt. You couldn't you couldn't even compare it to like flying in a plane as a passenger in the back. Yeah. Can you is like a better view. Oh my gosh, beautiful view. The craziest thing actually when I was first flying and we had a kind of a cloudy day. I had never flown through clouds and when you're up there it feels like you're about to fly into a wall like you you Stop. don't trust that that's like a cloud <laughs> and you're just gonna go through it and I think that was the most surprising and scary thing oh my of gosh. my training so far but it's wow. going great and I love it my school is actually down here in Miami oh okay what's takeoff like what's scarier takeoff or landing or just landing <laughs> landing <laughs> landing for sure because you have all the elements kind of working again against you until Mm -hmm. you like lift a little the front and get those wheels on the ground Ah. you're already on the ground when you take off you're like okay just have to pull up a little bit but landing is definitely the scariest (laughs) what was it like your first time like ever just taking off by yourself oh I don't I honestly got seasick like (laughs) like sky sick when I got up there because you're you trust yourself and your skills Mm -hmm. but you're also having to trust a machine yeah that you check it as much as you can before takeoff, but I mean, it's a tiny plane. Like it rattles, mm-hmm. it ebbs and flows with the wind patterns. And it's it's a little bit more for sure on the ground, but the sky <laughs> is more beautiful, definitely. Yeah. So like, where do you see yourself going with this career? Like, are you gonna like fly your own private jet or are you gonna be a commercial pilot? I, I don't see you doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely think this is just like a wonderful hobby to honor wow. my family. Wow. Um, and just the desire that we've all had to be able to fly plane. My, mm-hmm. I always tell myself, I'm not crazy. I'm just first in like my immediate family because we that. all have the desire to fly. But probably just like small little planes. Or mm-hmm. if anyone ever needs to get picked up, we've had some unfortunate family members need, you know, being rushed to the hospital or oh, things wow. like that. Um, or you never know where the world's going to go. So I'm like, yeah, all right. If I can take my little family and fly us up and just be safe in the clouds, that's honestly a, a fun goal and what pushes me to get that license. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. Thank you. Um, so you're not only a model, a pilot, an author, philanthropist, but also former team Miss Florida USA. That's how yeah. I know you. Yes. I feel like it's yes. pageants. What was it like competing at Miss Teen USA? Oh my gosh. 
when I think back, I get emotional, especially if I watch myself on stage because so beautiful. Thank you. I was 17, which when I think about that, I'm like, that was either yesterday or ages ago. It was yesterday. Wait, how old are you now? 23. So it was six years ago. It's been six years since I've hit a stage. Well, I feel like it was two years ago. I know. (laughs) Can we run it back? Well, that's what we're trying to do. But, um, It was incredible. Honestly, that stage was amazing. Mm -hmm. It was like a Victoria's Secret runway. And then crazy enough, when I got to top 10, I was standing near Sophie Robenstein, who actually ended up becoming a Victoria's Secret angel. No way. The year after we competed at Team USA. And I was like, girl, this runway, it was really just prep for you to walk the even bigger runway for Victoria's Secret. So she really walked for Victoria's Secret? She did. And she had like three looks. I didn't know this. She was Tennessee, my year. Super tall, beautiful brunette. Oh my gosh. She's amazing. Wow. But Team USA honestly taught me so much. A lot of preparation. Mm -hmm. Made some really nice friendships it's yeah. nice to follow everyone and just see where they've ended up over the past few years and seeing a lot of girls return to the Miss USA stage mm-hmm. is also super encouraging so fingers crossed I get there this year yeah dropping so, so a bomb on that one <laughs> I mean it's not a big secret I feel like people are kind of predicting you as the front runner oh, for Miss Florida you. USA so how do you feel going into Miss do you have any advice for girls that are transitioning from team to Miss for sure I think for me is just to know yourself one and to feel ready that's why I've taken this six year long hiatus yeah that was pretty long it was <laughs> and I feel like it would have been super natural to just go for it the few mm-hmm. years after, but I wanted to feel like a miss. I wanted to look like a miss, and mm-hmm. I wanted to be someone that my younger self would want to look up to. Um, so knowing yourself, knowing your why, and just being fully prepared with no regrets. I love that. But that's, the, that's the train we're on right now. So yeah. I'm really excited. Is there any changes in like your training or your styling? Definitely styling. Yeah. Definitely <laughs> styling. At Teen USA, I wore all sky blue. My mm-hmm. whole wardrobe was blue. Um, and I thought that was a sweet consistency that my mom and I planned for yeah. Teen USA. But going into Miss, it's definitely more sophisticated, yeah. a little sassier, a little yeah. sexier. <laughs> um, because the goal is Miss Universe. And exactly. those girls don't just come to play. So, no. <laughs> so we're prepping now in hopes that one day that dream comes true, but yeah. just being ready, especially because Florida is only two or three weeks before Miss USA. You have to be ready for Miss USA. And then I feel like after Miss USA, you're kind of going straight into Miss Universe. You don't have a big window of time. So right. I feel like right now is the time to prepare for Miss Universe and just gear up nice. for that. It's going to move really, really fast, you know, once everything yeah. starts going. It's crazy, but I'm really blessed with the team I have behind me. I have Gina Mellish as my oh, interview her. coach. She's oh amazing. Gosh. I've known her from Giovanni Girl 10 years ago, 12 I love years her ago. Jewelry. Oh, it's she's so beautiful. Cool. Yeah, I think she's, she's like an actual angel. She is. <laughs> and I also have PR um, mm-hmm. pageant coaches with Jules Myers and all of them just oh, really uplifting me. We always say uh, a rising tide lifts all boats. So we're really about the teamwork and mm-hmm. it's been super positive. I love that. So you're in good Thank hands. Yes. I feel like you've never needed coaching. I've known you literally <laughs> since like, what was that pageant that we did in New York? Like a long, <gasps> you were a junior. Oh my gosh, you were like, I was like 13, so, yeah, 12 literally. or 13. Oh my gosh, so 10 years. We've known each other oh for 10 years. Gosh. Oh, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> no, that makes me feel so old. Going too fast. <laughs> I know. My gosh. Oh, you could never be old. Literally never. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I want to hear about Red Flags Run. Yes, <laughs> yes. So Red Flags Run is a workshop that I founded this past year after Hearing some crazy stories in the modeling industry, like I said, it's changed so much, Mm -hmm. but I feel like women are more vocal these days about some of the unfortunate situations that happen to them. And with social media, it's become even more accessible to Mm -hmm. kind of infiltrate young minds and unfortunately prey on the innocent. Um, So red flags, it's really red flags, question mark, run. If you feel a red flag, if you see a red flag, head for the door. Um, mm-hmm. But it educates young people on being safe online. I love that. And I I think we've always been told in schools, you know, don't post something you wouldn't say out loud or don't share a photo you wouldn't want your grandma to see. Mm-hmm. But I think now more than ever, people are getting really, really sneaky about how they communicate with younger generation and how really? they unfortunately take advantage of it. 
Um, so I'm trying to make being safe mm -hmm. online cool, trying to make it come from a peer. I feel like it's always been cool to be safe <laughs> online. I Have hope you, so. Was there like a personal experience that like motivated you to start this? I think a lot of it is just, you know, unsolicited opinion or hate mm -hmm. comments. I'm sure with your following, you've experienced some yeah. unkind situations on social media. But for me, it was hearing other girls, you know, plan to meet up with someone and then it going a bit awry oh, or no. people, you know, finding out information about them or finding photos about them online wow. that shouldn't be out there. And you can just see how defeated it gets mm -hmm. women. But, you know, 30% of a lot of what is shared online is, you know, sexualized imagery and taking advantage of young children. So, wow. which is like such a scary statistic. It's so scary. I know like my sister is like super private with like yeah. her kids. She's like, even if I take a picture, she's like, don't show anyone. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what's out there. And I feel like on TikTok now, a lot of moms are like, Right. pulling their kids off of social media right. and making sure that like the kids aren't there because it is very it's a weird world out mm -hmm. there so we have to protect everyone I know, I know. and it, it's sad too because you and I I mean we love to share mm -hmm. we love to share our lives yeah. but for the younger generations I think it's just it's not as safe anymore yeah. it's it's not my parents and grandparents time where they could just run around outside until yeah. the lights turned on and knew when to go home it's Sadly, now everyone is looking for an opportunity to, to make their strike, and no. not everyone's great out there, unfortunately, yeah. so we got to protect the kiddos. Yeah. They're our future, and um, So is there anything that, like, my audience or I can do to, like, be involved and, like, spread the yeah, word? Yeah, yeah. So I'm um, hosting some workshops through Zoom virtually and mm -hmm. also pop-ups in Orlando where I am. Um, I'm going to schools, but it's really just I have a little infographic on my Instagram, um, kindly and lovingly sharing it with people. I think I a lot of us are inundated with information all the time, but when it comes from someone who loves you, wants to care for you and protect you, it's a completely different conversation. So Absolutely. just being being loving about it and doing it for someone's benefit. Yeah. And hopefully, like, there's, like, tips being shared about, like, not always sharing your location right, and things right. like that, too. The info, it's, uh, we have a breakdown. It's SMART, and each letter is a tip on how to Ooh, what stay are safe. So SMART stands for, first of all, is it safe information to share? I usually say don't post your location while you're still there. Mm -hmm. um, is this person reliable to meet up with? If not, ask a parent or ask your parent to come with you. Do not, A, accept gifts or unsolicited opinions or emotional support. That's unfortunately how a lot of people try and grow connection online. Wow. Um, and then R, is this person reliable? Do you know them? Has your family met them? Again, just any in-person contact with someone you don't know is scary. It should yeah. be scary. And then T, trust yourself and tell someone. Wow. So they're really easy checkpoints to have in your mind when you're communicating with someone you may not know on social media. And it's really easy to remember smart, be smart online, mm -hmm. make wise choices. That's what my mom always said every day, walking out of the house on my way to school, make wise choices. <laughs> so she's definitely inspired that side of it all, but um, just being smart and yeah. protecting yourself and being safe. I love that. Thank you for sharing Thank that you. with us. So starting your own philanthropy had to probably be a lot of work. I feel like it's like having a business. It mm -hmm. might be more work, right? Um, do you have any advice for anybody that wants to start their own foundation? Just do it. I think a lot of people are so hindered by fear of the yeah. outcome. Um, and I think knowing your worth and your value is way more important than a success or failure in business or foundation. Mm -hmm. That is going to supersede anything you accomplish in life so just going for it because you never know who you're going to impact and who you may help with your foundation a hundred percent and you're making such a big difference thank I'm so you. proud of thank you thank you I just imagine little me looking up to Lisa and being like oh she's so beautiful she's a Barbie <laughs> so and here we are oh my god I don't <laughs> know if Barbie I was that pink. smart but <laughs> no you were for sure you still thank are. you thank you um so I do have to ask I think you brought him up a little bit earlier is there anybody special in your life yes I have a sweet 
partner, Rowdy. Um, his sister was actually Miss Florida USA 2020. Wait, what? Monique Evans. <gasps> so I'm dating her sweet brother. She was actually wow. our matchmaker. Stop. And I love this story. I had no idea. It was actually, I love telling this story because it makes my heart flutter a little bit. Yeah. But um, she had mentioned him to me about a year before she connected us um backstage at miss florida usa we were wow. helping crown the next people and um you know we were both in different stages of our life and then it just worked out last february we've been together for over a year congratulations thank you and it's nice being with someone who understands this world and mm -hmm. has seen you know his sister go through it and yeah how much and monique is and, like a legend so oh she's seen it like all. <laughs> double crown she's yeah. unreal and now she's a mother and thriving wow. so it's really special to be with someone who understands what it takes to really achieve the things that that i'm hoping for and dreaming for oh i love that i know you have a little fur baby but yes. any plans for like kids in the future oh definitely yeah. i think i was born to be a mother honestly oh, I that's see that. thank you and um yeah, definitely kids. Rowdy wants like eight kids. So I'm, wow. <laughs> I'm like, um, all right, once the ball gets rolling. Like, do I have to give birth to all of them? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think after Miss Florida and after I close this wonderful chapter of Miss my universe. life. Oh, yeah. Miss Universe. Yes. But yeah, you have a long there. way to go. <laughs> Maybe like in a, two years. <laughs> yeah, but once once that chapter is, is closed, I, yeah. I really think that's the career path I'll take is being a mom and hopefully I raising wonderful that. people. Oh, it's so awesome. So speaking of Miss Universe, the organization sold 50% of the company mm -hmm. to Raul Cantu in yeah. Mexico City to help with brand awareness. I want to know what you think they could do to gain more visibility. I think I've always said is that they need to or should private label products for the Miss Universe contestants. I think we are in such a consumer society mm -hmm. that if each winner had a lip gloss or a small product or their favorite pageant prep tool and capitalize off of that, I think they would really be creating an economy around pageantry in the industry. Oh my! And gosh. so I'm like, I love the idea that they are coming out with a magazine this mm -hmm. year for Noelia, um, but something that will be longstanding and will you know, be a memento for each of the queens as they go through I their love year. That idea, a product, just push it. Especially beauty oh, products, because it gosh. is a beauty pageant at the end of the day. So it's right. like, what are these queens known for? Make the up. glam, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. And I mean, you know, everyone has their own beautiful feature, their favorite product, and it's just. Oh, it's sitting right there for them to grab. So I hope if anyone's listening for Miss Universe, <laughs> private label product for Miss Universe and Miss USA and all of the wonderful yes. contestants. And then pay her invoice for the <laughs> consultation. Because... My one person fee. <laughs> yeah. Literally, that's brilliant. That's so smart. I think that Miss Universe, they have like a skincare or like a drink. Okay. It's over Amazing. in Asia. So they're kind of starting. But I think I'd love to see like a bigger push on that because mm -hmm. I think for that would sure. be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Is there anything else you want to share with our audience? I just love you. I love you. Truly, I love all that you're doing. You have so many balls in the air, and I just, I'm always so in awe of all of the beautiful things you post in oh, your Pink Apple you. brand and just everything you're doing with photography and beauty by Lady Code. It's just, thank you. I feel like there's 10 things, and the graph is just like, through the roof on thank the success you. of them all so thank you i'm so happy oh to be gosh. here thank you for no, even that having a lot me. to me like coming from you because oh i feel like i look up to you and your mom so much oh. so hearing that from you i'm like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> no you got you really are doing amazing things thank you mm -hmm. okay so before we wrap it up this is yes. my favorite part of the show i love this or that so okay. you can elaborate if you want to or just give me a one word answer whatever you want okay okay first one is farm slash countryside or city Oh, farm girl. Really? I am like a third generation rancher's granddaughter. Really? Put me in some cowgirl boots and some oh mud. Gosh. Are Plus you like cottagecore? Is that like your style? I think so. Oh Deep down, gosh. once pageantry is over, <laughs> yeah. that's, that'll be where I'm living in my little oh my love shack fancy lifestyle. I love that. That's so cute. Ocean or mountains? Ocean. Always. Okay put my little feet in the sand yeah get those good negative ions yeah she's a florida girl mm -hmm. florida girl <laughs> through and through jeans or leggings jeans really yeah oh my gosh I, yeah oh you're so young <laughs> i'm like a leg i'm like literally a millennial like leggings okay <laughs> 
cooking or being cooked for cooking yeah. i am in my like little homemaker era so i'm I love baking that. bread and learning how to cook steak okay which is kind of daunting That's as a tough. woman i don't know yeah. but i think i've handled it oh my god so cooking for others is a, a nice way to love on them i totally see you in like one of those like tiktoks where like they're like stay-at-home moms and they're, like, <laughs> cooking and they're like dresses and it's like, like so Smith. <laughs> yeah <laughs> trying to embody her <laughs> yeah I love that um passenger princess or driver I'd say passenger princess Same. I'm just I mean, a girl we're just girls <laughs> I know I saw this uh, meme the other day and it's what do you want to be when you grow up and it's this little girl and her tutu saying I want to be a princess yeah so deep down we all like I want to be pampered a little and yeah. taken care of driven around Exactly. It's probably safer for everyone on the roads, too, if I don't drive. Oh, same here, 100%. <laughs> but we all know you're coming because you're pink cars. So. Yeah, literally, they stand out. But thank God I have a Jeep. It drives over anything. I'm That's like, good. I hope there's a curb. Drove right over it. It's fine. Wasn't I didn't there. feel it. No. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay, awesome. So where can we follow you on social media? My Instagram is at Lou Shefflin. TikTok is Lady Lou. And Ooh, Lady Lou. Lady I want to see Lou? your TikTok. This is so cute. Oh, it's fun. I mean, I just dabble, but awesome. And what about your foundation? My foundation, you can just find it as a highlight on my Instagram. And we're in the beginning state phases. So definitely growing, but I love that. it's exciting. I'm so excited to follow your journey. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Of course. Yay. I love you.